And the race is on to evacuate not just the remaining Americans, but also our Afghan allies who fought alongside the U.S. military over the past two decades. Complicating the matter, the Taliban has set up checkpoints and are reportedly attacking some Afghans who even try to reach us and reach our military planes. As of this afternoon, U.S. officials said that about 4,000 Afghans have been evacuated to the United States, a small fraction of what that number needs to be. The Washington Post reports that AIDS Group estimate that the number of Afghan applicants for special immigrant visas, as well as their family members, is 80,000. Joining me now is Krishamara Vignaraja, president and CEO of Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service. She was also a policy director for First Lady Michelle Obama. Um, thank you so much for being here, um, Krishamara. Uh, let's talk about the, the, the challenge of getting, you know, people that we want out, these 80,000 people, to be able to physically get to the airport. It, 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 from what you understand, how difficult is it for them to even get to us? Incredibly. Um, so there's a few issues uh, that have caused trouble. Um, one is that about 50 percent of our Afghan allies are outside of Kabul. Uh, so they are in heavily Taliban-controlled territory. And it is clear from the statements made by the Pentagon that they have no capacity, no intent to evacuate these individuals are in heavily Taliban-controlled territory. And it is clear from the statements made by the Pentagon that they have no capacity, no intent to evacuate these individuals to Kabul or out of the country. Um, even those who are in Kabul, who have communicated to us that they are debating whether to go uh, to the airport in the hopes that they can be evacuated or shelter in place, are trying to figure out how to actually get to the airport, because obviously these are actively patrolled streets uh, by the Taliban. And so yeah. they are so close to potential freedom, and yet they mm -hmm. can't make their way home. Yeah, to say nothing of the fact that they may have papers on them that indicate that they worked with us, which make, puts them in even greater danger. So, so here's the, the thing that is infuriating, I think, to a lot of, of probably the folks that watch this show, is that if they are able to scale all of those hurdles and get on those U.S. planes and get here, I want to give you a sample of what they're going to face from the people who are pretending to be the most concerned about Afghanistan right now. This is Stephen Miller, who most people know as just somebody who's made his life about tormenting people of color and keeping them out of the United States. Here he is, last night on Fox. Resettling in America is not about solving a humanitarian crisis. It's about accomplishing an ideological objective to change America. There's a lot of people in Afghanistan, millions and millions and millions, who don't like the Taliban, and rightly so. That doesn't necessarily mean that all those millions of people are Jacksonian Democrats who are pro-American and who will embrace our way of life. Certainly, it is a humanitarian crisis. He's a fool, but I want to let you respond to him. It's true that our Afghan allies won't embrace his way of life. Um, his way of life was ripping 5,000 children from their parents' arms. Um, his way of life was allowing innocent children to die because he believed that kids belong in cages. Look, Stephen Miller is about as un-American as they come. He's not an authority on what the American way of life is. Our way of life is fighting for the rights of girls to get an education. Um, our way of life is America keeping its word. Our way of life is uh, leaving no one behind. And that's why our American allies who risk their lives to save ours deserve a hero's welcome here. Yeah, and, and luckily he is, he is you know, there is, a, there is a white nationalist contingent in the United States, but they are not the majority, far from it. Um, what we're seeing is that there are some Republican governors who are singing a very different tune. Uh, Georgia's even governor, who's not a, really a big fan of, of people of color voting, but he has said he's open to accepting uh, refugees from Afghanistan. Uh, the Utah's governor is, says he's eager to assist with resettling Afghan refugees. Um, Kim Reynolds uh, of Iowa, who's not too much in favor of stopping COVID, but she says she's willing to take in eligible refugees. And, and there's Governor uh, McMaster, uh, who says that it's, a, it's, it's our duty to take in uh, refugees. Can you talk about the disper you know, what could be the dispersal, what could wind up being the dispersal of people from Afghanistan around the country, how you think that's going to work, and how COVID, to be frank, complicates it? Because some of these states are not fighting COVID, so they may be going into COVID hotspots. 
Look, it is heartening to see a sharp contrast in terms of Republican governors' responses, because obviously, you know, in 2015, when the Syrian crisis uh, led to an infusion of refugees, we saw a number of these Republican governors speak out and reject refugees. Um, so let's hope that this means that there has been some progress. But this is heartening, because typically Afghan allies will relocate to um, the D.C. metro area. So mm. Virginia, uh, Maryland's governor, um, you know, announced that he would welcome refugees uh, coming. Um, so, you know, we've typically seen people go to the D.C. metro area, Texas, California. These are obviously areas that are dealing with affordable housing um, crises and other issues. And so knowing that there are other states that we can look to to welcome and integrate Afghan allies, I think, is incredibly valuable. It's also just really important to understand that this is a win win situation. We obviously have a moral and military obligation to these individuals, but these are people who become engineers, doctors, yes. entrepreneurs. Um, they're the people who worked in hospitals and AIDS and assisted living homes during the pandemic. They're the ones who are at meat processing plants, taking jobs that Americans won't. And so I think it's really important to recognize that this isn't just, isn't just the right thing to do. It's the smart thing to do for America. Indeed. This is, a, as you said, it's a win-win, enhancing our culture with people who sided with us in a war against the Taliban and did everything they could to help us win, which was really an unwinnable situation for us, but more for them. So they deserve to be here, and hopefully they will all be here very soon. Uh, Krishamara Vignaraja, thank you so much for being here.